You've seen it all over social media, people claiming that they've become property millionaires from flipping property, or they've made 100K profit from buying and selling a house. But is this still the reality? Given the changes we've seen in the property market over the last 18 months, 24 months, a really big boom in, in prices, and the economic conditions, including inflation that we've seen since COVID, have had an impact. So is it still possible to make profit from flipping flipping property in 2024. Is it still worthwhile? Well, that's what I'm going to be covering in today's video. So firstly, what do we mean by a flip? Well, a flip is when someone buys a property, which is normally in a rundown condition, in a poor condition, and then they add value to it, normally by doing a refurb, and that's normally a kind of major refurb. And they might also add some livable space. So they might reconfigure the property, maybe add a bedroom or an additional bathroom. So some more advanced flips may add livable space by doing a loft extension. So adding potentially one or two bedrooms and an ensuite. And another way might be doing an extension on the property or potentially converting a garage into livable space. So all of those things add value to the property. Then once that work's been carried out, the property is then sold at a higher price. Selling at a higher value allows you to make a margin and therefore a profit on deals like this. And that's after all costs have been factored in, including the refurb, including the legal fees for buying and selling, agent costs, and any other kind of cost of the transaction. In terms of time scales, a flip is normally carried out as quick as possible, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is reduce the cost of finance if there's any kind of bridging or short-term loans involved. The second reason is to ensure that the market doesn't change. The price you're going to get isn't going to change in a sort of short period of time. You're not going to get, you know, a crash, for example. So if you try and sell it in a six to 12 month window, which is normally what a flip would be sold in, the beginning of that being the actual purchase date and at the end being the selling date, you can get in and out of that transaction as quickly as possible, make your profit and move on. That's the ideal scenario. But what has changed? Why might flips no longer be viable? Well, one of the big factors that we all know very well is cost of living crisis, which has been caused by inflation and supply issues resulting from COVID. And this has really hit the kind of construction world and therefore impacted on the property world quite considerably. We know since COVID that we have gone through a huge kind of spike in inflation, which actually peaked at 11% in 2022. And looking at the data for the construction industry, material prices have actually gone up by 43%. And that is because there has been a real shortage of supply, particularly on things like wood because of the reduction in manufacturing during COVID has then caused a backlog in supply and the demand for materials hasn't changed and therefore we've got a massive discrepancy between demand and supply which has caused prices to go up. And secondly another economic factor which has hit the construction industry is due to Brexit and COVID which has caused a shortage of supply in labour in people willing to kind of work in construction and this has impacted on the price rises as well because essentially the, the cost of labor have gone up again because of that supply and overall according to data from Knight Frank construction costs have actually increased by 24 percent since 2020 which is a huge kind of increase and obviously you know we thought inflation was bad at 11 percent and obviously that's across the economy but construction costs going up 24 percent since 2020 is very significant and this significant increase in cost has completely changed the landscape for those property deals that require refurbishments in order to add value. And on flip deals, that has particularly squeezed the margins and squeezed the potential profits available quite considerably. And what else has changed? Well, the second factor that we need to think about is the market and the property market. Now, obviously, we've had a kind of boom over the last couple of years, but that is kind of now changing and the market is sort of stabilizing and cooling a little bit. And some analysts are predicting that that will continue into 2024 and that flatlining of the market that we saw the back end of 2023 is going to continue. And actually some analysts are predicting a sort of marginal drop over the next 12 months. Halifax, for example, is predicting a drop in overall prices between 2 and 4%. And in terms of flip, although that cooling of the market and that reduction in prices 
prices in some areas may mean that you're able to negotiate good deals on the front end, so at the purchase end. But what this means is on the selling side, you're gonna have much more difficulty getting the price you want when you come to sell it. You're gonna have far less room for negotiation on the selling price and actually getting the high sort of end of value that you want. And this is gonna be particularly pertinent if the market does drop by 4%, like Halifax is saying. That kind of situation is gonna potentially worsen. And this means that for flip properties, you potentially run the risk of actually making a loss. Because if we look at the average house price, which is currently at 242,000, a 4% drop on that is 9,680, which is gonna really eat into your margins and potentially mean that you don't make any profit at all. And the next change to look at is around tax. Now, one significant change here is around tax banding for capital gains tax. Now, capital gains tax is all to do with an investor buying in a personal name. A significant change that was brought in to capital gains tax was the allowance, so essentially the tax-free gain that you could make, has dropped by 50% from 2023. So it's gone from £12,000 tax-free allowance to £6,000. What this means that people doing flips in personal name, you've just lost 50% of your allowance and that's going to really impact on your margins. If we look at it from a limited company perspective and in terms of corporation tax, which is what you'd be liable for for any profits made within your investment company that was doing flip, the corporation tax banding hasn't really changed for lower end of profits. It's changed for profits over 250,000, but for anything below 250,000, it's still at 19%. But of course, 19% is still a, a hefty cost to your margins. So let's look at some example numbers to see the impact of tax and some of these tax changes. So if you had a flip that made a profit of 20K, firstly, looking at capital gains tax, the so capital gains tax is the GT. Before 2023, the threshold was 12K allowance. So this means that on a profit of 20k, the capital gains tax on that would be 2,156, so CGT due. But if we look at the new tax changes, so this is 2023, and the reduction by 50% to a 6k allowance, and what that does to the tax position and profit, you'll see that the CGT due is 3,920, which is the difference of 1,800, which is a 9% difference. And we know that 9% on a very slim margin on a flip can make a huge difference. So if we look at the profit on these two deals to compare, so with the before 2023, with the higher allowance, the profit would be 17,844 after tax. And then after 2023's tax change, the profit will be 16 thousand pounds so as i mentioned you've lost one thousand eight hundred pounds nine percent difference in your margins which will obviously make a difference on that deal but obviously if your profit position was higher that nine percent would be even more sorely felt and just as a kind of quick note as well just looking at the position for corporation tax on a profit of 20k corporation tax at anything below 250 is at 19 percent so your tax due would be 3,800 tax due and that means your profit would be 16,200. So it's interesting to note now that really the position for personal name, which is what where CGT comes in, is now the, pretty much the same as for corporation tax. So where before there might have been some advantage to putting this in your own name with the, the higher allowance, with the changes and if you're on a higher a tax band, which is what this is based on, so this is on a, a higher tax rate, then there isn't much difference between that 16,000 there after this tax change and the 16,000 in the limited company position before corporation tax. Hi guys, if you're enjoying this video today, I really appreciate if you can like and subscribe. All your support means so much, so thank you. So we're gonna look at a deal now, which is a really great flip deal. So we're gonna look at the position, what it would be before some of these changes in the market 
and the impact of COVID and inflation had. And then we're going to look at what it is now and compare the difference. So we're looking at this flip deal it's in our local investment area it is a typical flip property with some good margins we know that it was an auction and it was on for fifty thousand, but actually sold in the end for a hundred thousand and this was a few months ago and it sold for yeah hundred thousand there was an auction fee of two thousand four hundred the refurb was forty five thousand seven seven four then you add stamp duty which was 3000 then survey fee 500 and then we've got some of these costs related to it being a flip so we've got agents fees for selling that's 2100 so that's based on the end value of this property which is 150000 then you've got bills and council tax and things like that during the refurb so that's estimated at 500 and then you've got solicitors fees which is buying and selling at 2,400. So all of those costs come to a total of 156,704. So we can see here that based on a estimated end value of 150,000 pounds, the 2024 position of this flip deal would be 6,000 pound loss. Now let's compare the position before COVID. So a lot of these costs will be the same, but there is some differences. So before COVID, before this booming market that we're seeing, particularly in the Northeast, where it still is booming, one of the sort of higher growth areas of 2023, rather than purchase the property for 100,000, you could have got that property for 90,000 pounds. So that's purchase price of 90,000. We know that the refurb costs have gone up 24% since COVID. So the position a couple of years ago would have been that the refurb costs would be 34,789 and that's obviously compared to the 45 up here. So that means the total cost here including all of these other costs which haven't changed would take this to a total of 135,015 pounds. So what that would have meant was you sold the property for 150, your total cost of 135, so your profit would have been 15,000. Now these examples aren't factoring in any tax just for simplicity so you can see the key difference that before covid we're in a position of fifteen thousand pounds profit but due to kind of market changing over the last couple of years due to inflation the increase in materials costs and construction costs this has now changed the game significantly and we're seeing a six thousand pound loss in deals such as this which is a twenty one thousand pound deviation from where we were before COVID to where we are now. And this is really the challenge that investors are facing with flip deals in today's market. So as you can see from the deal that I just talked through, profits and margins are very tight on flip deals. And that is because of the environment that we're in, in terms of inflation, the 43% material increases we've seen in construction and the overall construction costs increasing by 24% since COVID. And of course, the property market presents its own challenges because if you are relying on selling a property at the high value that you want, there could be a potential dip in the market this year of 4% if you believe some of the analysts. And that is going to mean your deal is going to be at risk and potentially might make a loss. So is it worth the effort and the risk? Well, I think firstly, you need to be conservative with your numbers in terms of your refurb numbers numbers and in terms of your end value what you expect to sell it for you would essentially want to do three numbers you want to do your worst case scenario your kind of ideal scenario and your best case scenario for your selling price and for your refurb numbers and you need to be happy with your kind of worst case scenario and base everything off the worst case scenario because anything above that you are going to have a pleasant surprise and the second thing you need to do is keep your costs down as much as possible so that's on the refurb and any other kind of selling costs and also with your finance costs as well keeping those down because you need to count every 
pound really within a deal at the moment based on tight margins that I've talked about. And overall, I would say is that flips are looking very difficult for the average property investor in 2024. You need to be cautious, you need to run your numbers very carefully and try and reduce your costs and try and reduce your purchase prices as much as possible in order to actually make a margin. So factoring all of that in, if you are able to make a profit this year, amazing work, well done to you, because I think it's gonna be really, really tricky. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. Can I ask a huge favor? Can you subscribe to this channel? The reason being is that we are trying to grow it and the metric that we take the most notice of is the subscription numbers, because that means we know that loads of people getting value from these videos. So it would mean a huge amount to us if you're able to subscribe. So thanks in advance for your support.